showcasing local talent, professionals, and everyday people making Salt Lake City what it is today. It's time for another episode of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. Welcome to the I Am Salt Lake podcast. This is episode 77. I'm Chris Hollifield. Welcome to my show. Welcome to the podcast where I uh, showcase locals, professionals, individuals, just everyday people, people in Salt Lake City that I believe is uh, making the city just a little bit better. I am saltlake.com is the uh, website. You can head on over there. You can find all of the previous episodes and all of the information that you need to know to uh, get in touch with me and find us on your uh, favorite social media website, Facebook, Twitter, got the voicemail numbers all right there online. So check out the website when you get a chance. Uh, Also, all the links are on there as well. So anyways, I got a great episode today, a really awesome guest on the show, Jeff Michael Weiss. I've known him for a while. He does the uh, Geek Show uh, podcast, as well as uh, Big Movie Mouth Off. You might remember my conversation with Jimmy Martin a few episodes ago. So I was really excited to bring Jeff on the show and uh, get an opportunity to chat with him and have him share his story on what he's doing uh, here in Salt Lake and, and what he likes about Salt Lake. I mean, it's that's that's been one of the my favorite things about the show is to kind of get people, what do you like about Salt Lake? So speaking of Salt Lake, in what you like about Salt Lake, call up that voicemail line, 385-202-5926. I'd love to hear what your favorite things are about living in the city of uh, Salt Lake City. So 385-202-5926, call the voicemail line, and uh, I'd love to uh, possibly play some of those on the on a future episode of the show. So anyways, without uh, rambling any further, let's jump into that conversation that I had with Jeff Michael Weiss. Thank you for listening to another uh, episode of the uh, I Am Salt Lake podcast. You do all kinds of stuff, so I'm going to let you kind of start off right off the bat, Jeff, with uh, kind of, you tell me what you do, you share with the rest of the listeners kind of what you do. Let's go down the list. Yes. Kind of probably be the best place to start. Okay. Uh, my writings currently are for MSN Entertainment, including Parallel Universe, their sci-fi and fantasy related site. Uh, MSN Movies, which has reviews, interview articles, as well as mostly what I do for them are feature type stories and galleries in which they're sort of top 10 lists okay. that are themed around new releases, such as uh, when the new Evil Dead movie came out, I did a uh, a list of 10 of the most violent and gory horror scenes that I'd seen in movies. Wow. Uh-huh. And I also do some uh, writing for their TV site as well. Uh, so, so all online is, yes, is what that, you that's do? All, yes. Oh, okay, that's all. And you can find that under MSN Entertainment. Radio-wise, I'm on X96's Radio from Hell as their movie reviewer on Thursday mornings in the 9 a.m. hour, x96.com. They actually... Uh, now do podcast versions of the episodes. Which is great. I love it so I can catch up. But I found out from Carrie they don't get their stats that way, so I feel a little bad. No, doing I know. Way. But, but well, one day. One, one day people will figure out how to track things online. It's, <laughs> it's already there. <laughs> yes. That's the problem. Yeah. So anyways, you X96. Yes. You uh, do that Thursdays. Uh, and then uh, visually for Comcast, Utah On Demand, uh, along with Jimmy Martin, I review movies for Big Movie Mouth Off, which you can find on Xfinity On Demand under Salt Lake Alternative. There's actually a little sleeve that uh, breaks down the reviews by title. Mostly new things, though. Uh, there's an archive that goes back a little ways. You can find things that might actually be on demand or DVD or Blu-ray now. Okay. Yeah, and I, and I talked to Jimmy in a previous episode, of, you know, we talked about Big Movie, but I kind of want to get your story kind of with that after we finish with everything you, you got going on. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy kind of shared the story, and I kind of want to hear your story, and awesome. listeners can see if they match up. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and then podcast-wise, I'm part of both Geek Show Podcast. We record every usually every three weeks a, a batch of episodes and you can find that on geekshowpodcast.com or under x96.com or on Facebook and of course I also review movies for the Mediocre Show on Wednesdays and and the Geek Show Podcast is part of the Mediocre Radio Network yes. so you cannot forget to plug that Synergy yeah and so that's that's the list that's what you do how you know I kind of want to hear the story because I know you've been doing stuff with Geek Show for quite a while yeah I way lo- before the podcast even came to be you guys were doing stuff on x96 right yes and and actually 
what sort of came before that almost. Well, okay. A geek show once upon a time was known as Geek Chat. Okay. And sporadically when Bill Allred would go out of town, Carrie decided that was time to bring the full geek on and just uh, nerd out and Yeah, have fun. nerd out and it, it started with me and Carrie and his friend David Olson or Punk and uh, Shannon Barnson and occasionally Scott Pierce, who uh, at the time was my coworker at the Deseret News. He was our TV critic. I was the movie critic. It was maybe every two, three months, maybe we'd get together. But but when we did, the phone lines would blow up and people would ask, when are you going to do Geek Chat again? And, and approximately what year was this? Just to kind of get a timeline for people. Uh, this was probably about 2000. Okay. So quite a, quite a while ago. Yeah. And the only reason I say that is because I know Geek Show celebrated their fifth anniversary, so that can kind of give people listening kind of an idea of, of, uh, so that was, you know, 13 years ago, probably. Yeah, and and Carrie had been looking for a way to do it more regularly. At one time, it was explored as an option for X96's AM equivalent. Mm -hmm. Talks fell through on that. And then about five or so years ago, Carrie finally had enough and said, we're going to do it as a podcast. We're going to do it regularly. Uh, Again, recruited me, uh, Shannon, Scott Pierce himself. At the time, Derek Hunter, uh, the local comic book artist who's now moved away and become a big time star doing backgrounds for Adventure Time with with Finn and Jake and Zach Shutt. And then uh, Lee Cade had actually come back to, to Utah in that time and sort of joined us uh, eventually, Derek had to drop out. Eventually, Jimmy came in, and and now there's a more solid cast than we've had on Geek Show in quite some time. Yeah, you guys have a lot of fun with that. I mean, I I definitely am jealous of the uh, ener- of the d- energy that you guys create of the drunky McSwearies. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's the best part of listening. Well, well, I, and and see, I wish I could actually listen to Geek Show this way. I wish and. and some listeners have to tell us sometimes if they'll do this, if they can figure out what the first episode of a recording session was, the second episode and third show, and then listen to them together and then follow the drunken as, progression. As, yeah, as, as you go. progress and, and get more drunk. drunk. And you guys have been bringing Jay Whitaker on quite a, quite a bit, or or what's what's the story behind that? Yeah, uh, C- Carrie had gotten to know him through his connections at Wise Guys, uh-huh. and Lee had uh, some obligations with his restaurant and couldn't do the full shows. Uh-huh. So he asked if he could bring uh, Jay on, and, and Jay's been great. I, he's a great comedian. Yes. Great, I, I've had him on the podcast. I've, he's a great guy. And it's funny how he sort of stepped in seamlessly, like yeah. he's been doing it all along. Sort, sort of like Jimmy did, actually, when, when yeah. Jimmy came in. It's like you'd never know that they hadn't been doing it the whole time. May, who knows? Maybe he'll become a full time panelist, right? You know, yeah, you know, cra- you know, crazier things have happened. We'll have to, yeah. if so, we'll have to break break the geek show ring on the on the on the, the circle. Yes, the circle, and and add another name to it if that happens. Yeah. What's your favorite all time favorite thing about doing geek show? I, the what I love about it one is that people have taken to it so much. Uh, at one time, we actually had a website which had a message board, which eventually got broken because, as we know, internet trolls can break everything. No, you love them. But, <laughs> but there was so much interaction, and eventually this community, this little geek show community was built that perpetuates to this day. They yeah. they show up for our movie night events every Sunday or every last Sunday of every month at Brewies where we show movies for free. They show up to a Big Shiny Geek Show pub quiz Wednesdays at at Lucky Thirteen, I, which you you host those a lot too, right? Uh, I well, I I'll guest co-host it. Uh, it's normally hosted by Shannon, uh-huh. uh, my hetero life mate, Shannon Barnson. <laughs> great guy, great and, guy, and Brian Young from uh, Big Shiny Robot. Uh, I actually write the sports questions, and and I'll read that round. But but when either Shannon or Brian can't fill in, I'm the more than willing to be the guest co-host. Yeah. And sports, I mean, were, were you like a sports kid or what? What was it? it, it it's weird. I think I'm a hybrid nerd. Well, well, typically for the geeks, I mean, geeky people typically aren't sports Yes, not fanatic. sports fanatics and they don't play sports. I started as a geeky, clumsy kid who, however it turned, by the time I got to high school, finally – it proved I had some athletic acumen. Really? And yeah. So I, there, I was sort of torn by the schism. Was I a nerd? Was I a, a drama kid? Or, or was I an athlete? And I had all these yeah. sides fighting. So, so actually, believe it or not, I was probably less popular 
than than you would think because everybody thought I should have a particular allegiance to one of those than yeah. than the other. So did you play sports in high school? Yes, I did actually. I, I played a little bit of baseball and I played a little bit of football too. Wow, football. Who would have guessed? <laughs> well, yeah. It, the thing is, I was about the same size in high school that I am now. Yeah. So yeah, for 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 pace in high school where kids at the time weren't especially large or and or fast I, yeah. I fit in so yeah speaking of Payson actually you grew up in Payson yes yes uh, I, I, I'm actually a native Californian oh, really? uh, See, I didn't know that about yeah, you I was born in San Gabriel California lived in El Monte and Alhambra and and a few other areas in Los Angeles till I was about five and then my parents got a nice opportunity for better paying jobs in Utah yeah which actually had at the time, better air quality than than, than what it is now. Yeah, and better than there was in smoggy Los Angeles, which was good for their asthmatic children. So we moved <laughs> moved to Payson to be next door to my grandparents who ran an apple orchard. Wow! Yes. So you kind of grew up on a farm a little bit. A, a little bit, as weird as it was, I saw more headless chickens and turkeys than I care to in my first. So what got you out of Payson into Salt Lake then? What or did you just say I need to live in the city or was it? At what age did you move to Salt Lake then? Uh, well, I, w- I went uh, to college actually at Utah State oh, did University you? Okay, okay. In, in, in Logan. And like most college students, was absolutely out of money by the time I was done. Uh, was lucky enough for my parents to say, well, yeah, you can move back in with us to a point as long as you find a job. And I did, uh, which was actually working for the Deseret News, uh, the LDS-run newspaper in Utah, <laughs> uh, where I was working in their Utah County Bureau as a basically a South Valley correspondent. I was doing city news and and farming news for for the southern Utah County communities like Payson and Spanish Fork and Salem. <laughs> so far, like farming articles? Or yes. Just like, okay, it, top farmer of the month or, or uh, something? It, it, like was, it. it was more like farming trends. And, <laughs> Farm. and, and uh, Utah County's major agriculture uh, asset at the time was actually fruit farming, which was – sort of fell into my milieu because my parents or my grandparents had run an apple orchard for so long that, wow. that I sort of knew the ends. So, yeah. so seriously, I graduated from Utah state and I had a job within three days of, of graduating at Utah state. Which is kind of crazy to think about. Yes. Especially nowadays. A, a decent job with Deseret, Deseret news. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and, and eventually that grew into more opportunities where I joined the features department up in Salt Lake, uh-huh. uh, doing music and, entertainment related stuff and eventually movies for them. Yeah. And now, now how did you meet Carrie? You didn't meet him down in, in No, as it, it, weird as it is. We're we're about the same age. Went uh-huh. went to high school at the same time. He grew up in Salem. I grew up in Payson, but I knew his cousin Leslie Ray Jackson. Okay. He went to high school with me at Payson High where I'm ashamed to say that I helped pick on Leslie Ray Jackson, who was, <laughs> who was, I mean, I was a nerd, but this kid was a dork. Yeah. This yeah. kid was a huge dork who played chess in the lunchroom at, at lunchtime. And so you were kind of a bully. I, I was kind of a nerd bully. Yeah. I was I, as frightening as it is. Yes. Yeah. You just would pick on kids and, well, and- I, and especially the easy one, the easy <laughs> targets like Leslie, Leslie Ray, who, <laughs> if you beat him at chess, he would break down and cry in the lunchroom, which, that it, was just such an easy target. It, it was. And and for the more popular nerds like myself, that was sort of like a status thing that you made Leslie Ray Jackson cry in the lunchroom. <laughs> and, by and, and how chess. does Carrie, Carrie feel about that? I think he's a sort of amused, actually. Yeah. 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 I, Leslie Ray, if you're listening, I doubt you are, but it, I apologize for all those years of... Of insensitivity, it was it was the work of an insecure nerd at the time. Yeah. So, but but uh, but anyways, but, you met Carrie. Where did you meet him at then? Uh, interestingly, he met Shannon before. And, I did. and you and you and Shannon were good friends. Well, yeah, we're, we're we're good friends. While I was living in Utah County, I would come up here to visit my brother, who had friends living in what is now known at what was known at the time as the Pink House, okay. over on Fifth East, and I believe. Oh, I've, for, I've heard stories for, from for, Lee about that. Fourteen ninety two. Uh, south 500 east you can find yeah. sort of see it it's still covered up by a big group of trees yes it's true at one point the foundation of this house was so bad an end of it was held up by a car jack really yes but uh but lee lee Cade lived there with shannon barnes and uh and some other friends and that was how i met shannon and shannon at the same time well actually a little earlier than that had been appearing on x96 well an earlier version of Radio from Hell as the Amazing Sewer Boy, he and Carrie had sort of 
formed a bond. Yeah. And Shannon introduced me to Carrie. And then yeah. it was as if, why did we not know each other till now? Because uh, as it turns out, we were at a lot of the same nerd events at the same time. The, the opening of Star Wars at the, at the Center Theater down on 3rd South in Salt Lake. My, my parents actually okay. actually took us out of school to go see that to go see it wow. yes and we waited in that huge huge line which was amazing and I wish that every Star Wars fan could have have that had that experience I, I bet you it was incredible yeah well the century is if uh, there are those in Salt Lake who are familiar with the Villa Theater. Oh, yeah, yeah up in uh, sh- kind of Sugar House. In Sugar House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now sort of a, a carpet place. A, a, yeah, a carpet warehouse. The center was like that. It was mm. a single standing theater with that giant 70 millimeter screen, comfy chairs, and an amazing sound system. Essentially, you were in a film womb. Watching Star Wars under those circumstances was just amazing. Back in the late or 1977. 1977. Yeah, year that's a year I was born. So yeah, yeah. It, it it was incredible. But but I was there for that. It turns out Carrie and his parents were there for that. Star Trek the motion picture opening. We were there for that at the same time. Just still, and just never it, never met. Never met. Yeah. As, as crazy. And now as you guys sense. are great friends. So yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of kind of crazy to think about all that. Uh, I know. Small I, Lake City, like they say. <laughs> in, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mediocre show. How did I'm? This is one of my most curious questions: Is how did you get teamed up with doing the uh, weekly movie reviews with with those guys with the mediocre show? Well, as it turns out, Eric and uh, and, and his co-hosts have been fans of Geek Show, uh-huh. and there's as odd as it sounds for a podcast out of Philly, there's a huge. Salt Lake contingent that listens to the mediocre show, including friends yeah. of mine like Jeff Anderson mm-hmm. from Top Dead Celebrity, mm-hmm. who introduced me to mediocre show. Uh, Which I, I, their biggest listenership I heard is in Salt in, Lake. Is in Salt Lake. Yeah, it's yeah. not even in Philly, believe it or not. Jeff had sort of introduced me to them to me and and vice versa. And at the time, actually, uh, Zach Shutt, who was our engineer for Geek Show, he and his friend Zach Clark were sort of doing joking movie reviews for mediocre show, but it didn't. I, I'm not sure exactly how that didn't work out or or if bonds were broken there or or exactly what happened. Uh one time I was hanging out with with most Jeff at his house and we did a call in to the mediocre show and I wound up talking on on a on an episode for a while about movies. About about movies, movies and, and the next thing I know they asked me if I wanted to make it a regular gig. Yeah, and and how long ago was that probably? I mean, it's been it's been a couple of years, right? Yeah, it, that's that's been probably four years. Okay, so almost as long as as Geek Show. And you see, you seem to have a lot of fun with that. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, uh, in, in fact, even though all they're they're heckling, they they, <laughs> they always give you a hard time about where you call in at. You know, absolutely. Uh, I've I have been to Philly uh, once for one of their listener parties. I want to go again and. Uh, Let's go out to the barbecue in August. Yeah, that's it. See, that sounds like a great idea. Although Jimmy and I have an idea, probably spoiling the surprise, that one day we'll show up unannounced on their on their doorstep on a Wednesday. Well, you've kind of talked about doing that, anyways. When yeah. you, when you've talked to them on the on the show, so I, you know, yeah. I, I just don't think they believe you. <laughs> it's going to happen. I no, really think it's going to happen. But but you've been to Philly, but you haven't. Well, to the listener party, you said to right. One of the I've I've, I've never parties. been on. Well. I've been on one live uh, mediocre show, and that was when they were here for the Salt Lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the, which I, yeah, I didn't wasn't able to make that event. And I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't because it seemed like that was a lot of fun. It was. I think that is a high point. Uh, I still to this day think that is the single best episode that Geek Show has recorded. Yeah, uh, there's something about being in front of a live studio audience and the lights go on. Yeah, and. And you just feel like a like a like a rock star. Yeah, it You're was it like, was electric. Yeah, and Lee Cade broke himself with blueberry vodka. That's that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. So about about how many movies do you think you watch a week? I mean, I, you're always going out to movies, it, aren't you? I, at least five. At least I I, I would say at, at theaters. Yes, at, at theaters. At theaters, I'm guessing I see between 250 to 350 movies a year. Wow. And then to top it off, TV shows on top of that, and, mm-hmm. and, and all of that, and numerous comic books too. Yeah. I'm a huge comics nerd. <laughs> I, you, as, as Carrie calls me, I'm his comics rain man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever walked out of a movie? Have you ever just been so like, this is just garbage? I cannot not, make it through all the way. Not as a reviewer. Yeah. Not as a reviewer. As a viewer, I have walked out of movies, and that includes a couple of times I've walked out of movies at, at the Sundance Film Festival. It's 
when I know uh, that either the film's probably not going to get distribution, my review won't be needed, or it'll show up later sometime and, and I might see it re-edited under better circumstances. I, I have left a couple movies at Sundance. It's basically because there's a better option out there somewhere, yeah. something else that I could be seeing instead. So so pretty much movies you're seeing, they're always work-related. You kind of always have to be I, taking I, notes. I've and, always got to have the professor cap on. Yeah. It's, what's What's been one of your favorite movies that you've seen recently? Uh, you know, I know Man of Steel's getting knocked hard. Yeah, was that pretty good? I haven't, I, it, I haven't seen that yet. Here's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nerds complained that that Superman Returns didn't have enough action in it, uh-huh. which was uh, Brian Singer's uh, essentially his Valentine to Richard Donner and Christopher Reeve as Superman. Yeah, you, that that film was too too much of a Hallmark card to that for my tastes. There wasn't mm. nearly enough action. So what we get instead in this film is a big summer action film from Zack Snyder. So okay. lots of stuff gets blowed up. So lots it's, of things it's get fun punched. to see in the theaters. Absolutely. You know, the visual effects, the sound, Man. all of that. W- will this change the face of filmmaking as we know it? No. Will this change the face of superhero movies as we know it? Probably not. It's, it's definitely not in the greatest pantheon, mm. but, but given how bad a lot of the DC comics adaptations had been, I'm thinking of uh, Catwoman and Green Lantern to, to have a fun, superhero movie from DC Comics so they can at least compete with Marvel yeah, yeah. Comics a little bit would be nice. This coming from somebody who, by the way, has this weirdly insane reputation as a guy who hates DC Comics. Not a fan of DC, are you? Well, no. I, I made the joke years ago back when we had the Geek Show forums, and for some reason the knock stuck that against me that I hate DC Comics, which is ridiculous. Yeah. I, here, here's a guy who, who two years ago for Halloween Dread I bleached my hair so I could be Green Arrow. I, I think I remember that. If yeah. I rem- remember correctly, yeah, yeah, you got into it. Uh, definitely, I you, you I do love it. DC Comics yeah. characters. I just don't. They're, the movies, you the, know, the, not the, the movies. And and to be fair, I love Marvel Comics more, probably because I've always thought their characters were more human. Yeah, yeah, and more relatable. It, it, didn't every nerd nerdy kid essentially relate more to Peter Parker than they did to Bruce Wayne? Well, I'm not the biggest nerdy nerdy guy out there, but uh, from what I've heard, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. What's the worst movie you've ever seen? Probably. I mean, I kind of think I already know what it is. If it's well, uh, well, actually, yes. I and I, I'm not sure it's actually the worst, but the most painful movie for me is Meet the Fockers. <laughs> the, the the third of the Fockers movies. Yeah. Which well, it wasn't that because you guys had to sit through yes. so many episodes or, or not episodes. So so many viewings, viewings of it. Viewings of it. Yeah. View- like like close to eight. Was that was that for some reason I thought it was like twelve or thirteen or something like that. It was I'm trying to remember exactly how many you know, they started blending into one and I think I started <laughs> losing my mind. Maybe it was just the gray matter Or maybe it was all the ears. beers, you know? Because didn't you watch them at Brewies, right? Oh we watched the the very last time. What we wound up doing is uh, a fundraiser for uh-huh. the boys and girls clubs of uh, South Valley. Uh-huh. Um, okay, here's the interesting story. <laughs> Let's hear it. So uh Brewies showed the hangover part two. Uh-huh. And they got fined. <laughs> oh yeah, by, remind, by the DA, remind me that story. By, by the remind DABC me. because it had a scene of full frontal male nudity. I remember it. that. Yeah. I remember that. And and uh, a sting operation was essentially set up on Bruvies by a tattletale strip club. Yeah. That that had been fined for showing pornographic images on their TVs. So they finked on Bruvies, and so the DABC sent a Utah Highway Patrolman. To, to the, Bruvies, to, to the movie, to Bruvies, to make sure, yeah, there was a there's a movie showing at Bruvies that has a guy's dong in it. But wasn't that movie playing at other theaters? It, it, how were they getting away it, with it, it? It was. It's. It has to do with uh, their liquor license. Ah. Uh, somehow, because there's You're liquor in a beer, there's a man naked on the screen. I it, put two and two together. That gets kind of crazy. Yeah, as compared to say a strip club where guys are drinking booze and a girl is getting nearly naked, that seems more like a clear and present danger. To well, yeah, they're in front of you live, not on the screen. Yeah. Well, I what. The, did the DABC and Utah Highway Patrol expect that some some crazed drunken lunatic was going to jump into Bruvy's screen to get at the guy with a dong on the screen? I I never understood. I, I probably would have tried. Yeah, you know. Uh, but Bruvy's wound up getting fined, yeah. getting fined for it essentially. Uh-huh. And uh, 
kind people decided that they would take up a collection and pay the fine, but Bruvies had already paid for the fine, mm -hmm. like a long time before that. So Bruvies had all this money sitting around, and the manager at the time, Andy Murphy, came to me and Jimmy and said, can you guys think of a good cause uh, where we could give away the rest of this money? And we said, let's look into it. We talked to the Boys and Girls Clubs of South Valley, and at the time, Jimmy and I had voted Little Fockers, or uh, yeah, Little Fockers as our mm -hmm. worst film of the year. Mm -hmm. We decided what we were going to do was watch it as many times as equated in in minutes of Little Fockers to the number of likes we yeah. got on our Facebook page for Big Movie Mouth Off. <laughs> and and you were you just watching that page and being like, oh, watch watching it blow up, and I'm just like, oh, you're cringing. I'm like, no, you you no. people really hate us, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we. We started early on a Sunday morning. At least I did. Actually, I woke up before Jimmy did yeah. and started watching it without him. Yeah. And so uh, eventually, once he woke up, I brought the DVD over and we watched it a few more times. And then for my last viewing, we watched it at Bruvies with, with the Boys and Girls Club uh, organizers. That's awesome. And I can safely say that I will not watch that movie again. Did you in start my life. memorizing lines by the end? Yes. Or, or making up lines? I, I, whew. do you not just, do you not like Ben Stiller? Is that what it is? Or, I, I, it, what is it? What is it? What, what is your biggest problem? With Little Fockers, it's just a bad movie all yeah. around. I, I, and yes, I'll say this. Ben Stiller has gotten worse as his career has progressed. Yeah. He's gotten dumber, cruder. <laughs> he's, he's turned into more of an Adam Sandler than, than what he originally started yeah. as. Uh, but, but I'll still enjoy Ben Stiller here and there. Yeah. His, uh, appearances on the new season of Arrested Development were actually really funny. Yeah, no, I, I would I would agree, and and I mean he, his early stuff was I thought was really good. Absolutely, Ed, the the Ben Stiller show. Yeah, Ben Stiller show was great. What was that other movie he was in? My mind is blank. Uh, one of his first movies. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. But oh, he was in a lot of great movies to to, to begin with. Yeah. I, I, well, same thing with Adam Sandler. I, right, you know, great great comedian, great uh, actor, but for some reason just really lately just really shitty roles yeah i part of it is and part of it i'm gonna blame the public for mm. because when ben stiller and adam sandler try to step out of these dumb crude roles that have been established for them uh -huh. they don't get supported yeah well and they you know money you want to make money so you of course, right why not take a why not take a movie even if it's going to be garbage and you move on with your career although so, although part of you has to wonder at one at some point how much money is enough money yeah well, like Jack and Jill, how much money did they pay to really do that movie? You know, <laughs> Jack and Jill. <laughs> it looked like it, it cost about twelve dollars plus the cost of El Pacino's soul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, big movie mouth off. You you were talking about watching, you know, Little Fockers with with Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Share your story, how you guys met, uh, especially if you know people haven't uh, heard it yet, listening. Yeah. Well, I, I, as as funny as it sounds, uh, first off, Jimmy, I met Jimmy sort of at Sundance uh -huh. in, in, in passing, yeah. but then never really palled around with him until I went to San Diego Comic-Con. Okay. And, uh, he was going to some of the same parties that I was with Shannon, including a, a party for a British TV show that we like called the Mighty Boosh. Okay. And, uh, Jimmy sat in on one of the podcast, Geek Show podcast recordings that we did out at uh, Comic-Con and eventually he showed up and ingratiated himself and became part of Geek Show. Mm. Uh, and then he started showing up at the Geek Show podcast movie nights at Broovies. And at one in particular, we were sitting down at a table. And I remember not what movie it was that Jimmy was making a case for uh, <laughs> being good, but I was calling bullshit on him. Yeah. Very loudly. And it turned into quite a drunken argument. And everyone who was there was like so fascinated by it. And Brian Young from Big Shiny Robot overheard it and essentially was like, why aren't these guys doing a show together? Yeah. Well, you guys are both so opinionated. That, right. But yet you listen to each other's opinions. So that's what makes it great. Exactly. But but we don't always have to agree. Yeah. And sometimes we don't agree. And, and when we do, it, it can get heated. And you guys, I mean, it's, it's a podcast form too, actually, isn't it? Yes. Uh, that's, I, I just recently discovered that. For, for, for Big Shiny Robot. Yeah. When, yeah. when we can, we'll squeeze in uh, an episode or two of a, of a podcast where it's me and Jimmy talking with uh, our producers, Brian and Elias Pate. Yeah. Which I'm going to have Brian on the show here soon too. So, so that's great. We'll kind of mix it all together and, and get it all out there. Yeah. 
So uh, approximately how often do you guys record for uh, for big movie then? Uh, we try to every week, actually. Every week. At Bruvies, right? At, at, at Bruvies, who have been kind enough to, to let us do our craziness there. And when when Big Movie Mouth Off started, actually, it was uh-huh. a lot more drunken than it is now. Yeah. Like, they'd, we'd get there and the big beer would appear in front of us. And <laughs> and, and and sometimes we'd finish the beer through through the course of one episode, which normally is only a few minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> so we'd get a little... And people can find it on YouTube as well. Uh, on YouTube as well, and yes, they, and, and and on the Facebook page when we can, we'll post the links on. Yeah, no, on I there was as well. I was talking with Jimmy about uh, about the Facebook page, the interaction, you know, the questions that get asked, and and just the the uh, the viewers, you know, your your fans, I guess you would say better. Just oh yeah, that participation in the community that you guys have built with that is quite incredible. I it's it's something to see. I. I Things just blew up after that uh, little Fockers contest. <laughs> uh, after that, we started getting more and more in with the advertising agencies that represent the movie studios. Uh-huh. And when we give away tickets to advanced screenings, we'll add more and more fans all the time. Plus, uh, I will make a pitch for people who listen to X96 to listen to it uh, or watch Big Movie Mouth Off when, when Jimmy does his stuff with John Carter on the arrow. He'll make his pitch and... If you'd told me we would have ten thousand plus fans on on a Facebook page. on a Facebook page, I would have told you were you were crazy. I mean, Big Movie Mouth Off has more fans on Facebook than Geek Show, which which blows me away. Yeah, that's crazy. And you guys don't even have a website, do you? No, you guys got to get a website. I know. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the that's the next step for you guys, huh? And my, yeah, well, and Mike Pilot wants to del- wants to design it. Well, you're in good hands. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely. I've been I've been sent telling Jimmy you guys need to get a website for a while. So it's kind of nice to think that you guys are actually thinking about it. Ab- absolutely. What if Facebook goes down? Yeah, you know, <sighs> what, what are you going to do? You're going to lose all those fans and just oh, that'd be horrible. So what's your? You know, I always like to talk to people I bring on what they like about Salt Lake. You know, obviously I am Salt Lake. We're in Salt Lake. Uh, what, what do you like about living in Salt Lake, Jeff? Well, and, and part of this is having grown up for nearly half my life in Utah County, uh, Salt Lake, I, I think, gets a bad rap that it's not as diverse as it is. Mm-hmm. And But it's getting only more diverse as it goes. In, in particular, I would point to just a couple of weeks ago, the uh, Utah Pride Festival. Uh-huh. Utah and Salt Lake has one of the biggest pride events in the country yeah. this which, is for a state that that is thought of as so conservative which which it blows me away how big it is you know i know yeah it's it's pretty cool so so you just like the diversity I, here? I, I definitely well and salt lake also has an, an ideal mix of urban and suburban to me mm. too and but i'm a city guy you're a city guy yeah so so i can enjoy that i can although once I get fed up with it, I can get out you, a little. Do you go down to Payson quite a bit still? You got family down there? I do. My mother lives down there. Yeah. Well, my mom lives down in Orm, so we'll have to carpool, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Take the... hey, make them both go to Five Star Barbecue. Is that, that down that way? Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I haven't eaten there. On, I've on, heard about on, it. on Geneva Road. It's really good. It's pretty good food? Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of food, what are some of your favorite, like in Salt Lake, do you have any favorite local eateries, cafes, restaurants? Absolutely. Uh, I... I have a fond spot in my heart, like everybody does for red iguana. Oh, uh, of course, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but I have also love our friends' uh, vegetarian restaurant, Frisch. I was hoping you would mention them. Great food, a- absolutely. Uh, and and I'm also quite fond of the pizza by the slice places that we have down here too. Yeah. Uh, what's, not, your, what's your favorite place? Or I, do you have I, a few? It, it, it sort of fights for me because because yeah. I love the the more adventurous slices at, at a place like the Pie Hole. Yeah, but the pizza quality I will admit is better at Estee Pizza and Sugar House. I would have to agree with you. I'd have to agree. But the Sugar House Estee Pizza, the Sugar House, is, is absolutely by far the the better of the two. I I didn't say it. No, I did. <laughs> I did. I'm 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 not afraid to say it. It it also helps that that the S Day and Sugar House won't won't chase me out if I wear Red Sox apparel. <laughs> Which you know, when I first saw one of those ads, I mean, a while back, I was just like, "Are you serious? You I know you can't get pineapple on your pizza. You can't dip it in ranch. You can't wear a Red Sox hat. Come on." Well, well I re- still remember this day. Uh, Jimmy and Cat were staying at a hotel for their yeah. anniversary and ordered uh, S Day for. 
takeout or yeah. for delivery. Yeah, yeah. And the delivery person saw that they had a can of pineapple and was almost going to take the pizza away. They had, a, they had a can of pineapple in their hotel room. That they were going to put on the pizza. Oh, heck. Come on. Are we serious? Come on. This is Salt Lake, not New York or something. You know? Right. Oh, jeez. I that I yes. Yeah. You can serve your New York style pizza, but don't serve me the New York attitude. Yeah, yeah. It, it, well, it, and I've said it on multiple shows. This is Salt Lake. I am sick of people trying to pretend we're New York or California. Let's make Salt Lake Salt Lake. Let's have its own flavor. Ab- absolutely, its own I, attitude. Uh, by the way, I would be remiss also if I didn't mention my friend Jake's uh, Thai restaurant by. Bruvy solid Thai. I haven't eaten there. It's pretty good. <laughs> yes, and and let me suggest one dish in particular. It's let's, a curry based dish let's. called cow soy. Okay, which has uh, both soft noodles and crunchy noodles, as well as as a savory curry sauce for it. Which every time when I get done, I swear I want a straw just so I can drink the rest of the curry. <laughs> kind of dish it out, drink it like a like a cereal bowl or something. It, it's amazing. Yeah, I'll have to go eat there. I haven't uh, haven't been there yet. I'm glad you mentioned that because I'll have to go back and listen now. Okay, that's that's what Jeff recommended me to get. So, I, I, and my pitch for a new restaurant, by the way, R and R Barbecue. Haven't been there either. Uh, corner of Sixth South and Third West. It's it's where uh, High Eye Sushi, okay, drive through sushi place was. Okay, it's run by a couple of brothers who turned out to be so popular with their barbecue catering business that they were able to opening open an actual restaurant okay and oh i i think i've heard heard about this place now that you're saying that yeah yeah it uh, coming from from a utah raised cajun boy i'll say this they get the red beans and rice right <laughs> which which i'm as hard on anybody when it comes to cajun food so I've I've heard some stories. You can get a little out of hand. You can get a little crazy. <laughs> yes, yes. There's there's one bar slash restaurant in in Salt Lake where I'm almost not welcome because anytime I've had the food there, I've gotten in an argument with with the cooks over what they think constitutes Cajun slash Creole food. I won't name any names. <laughs> you won't name any names. What are you excited about? Summer's here. Besides movies, anything else you're excited about? Anything else you you like to do during the summer months? Uh, Other hobbies, interests? And I know Eric and Mike will give me grief about this. I'm looking forward to getting back to playing disc golf. Really? Yes. Didn't know that about you. uh, And Salt Lake and Utah in particular has an abundance of disc golf courses, including the one at Creekside uh, Park out in Holiday is regarded as actually one of the best – courses in the country really it's very challenging i will say that maybe you'll have to take me out with yeah. you yeah i've i've taken jimmy and i think he had a good time doing it actually <laughs> i like how you said think you know well he, he appeared to have a good time right? <laughs> yes i you allowed to drink while you do it you are oh, well, you, 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 I, it's it's in a park so you need to be a little more discreet yes and and amusingly, there are a couple of backwoodsy back holes, uh-huh. uh, including a couple that are added during the more summery months where that seem to turn into a place for other sorts of recreational activities, shall we say. Yeah, I'll definitely have to go check that out now. Yeah. Yes. For those who like to get high on life. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. But 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 disc golf's a lot of fun. It's And it, it's also a weird sort of community that's not unlike the geek community. Yeah. Uh, when Carrie and I first started playing, in fact, uh, I, I still wouldn't say we're necessarily good players. But you enjoy it. So but but, but we matters. enjoy it. And normally in sports activities like this, when people, I, and I just say this because I've actually played real golf before, and good golfers see bad golfers and just roll their eyes. Yeah. Good disc golfers will see bad disc golfers and try to help them. So Geek Show Movie Night, this yes. will be up before, it's the last Sunday, right, of every mm-hmm. month? Yes, June 30th will be our next one. Okay. Uh, and since it's Pride Month, we're going to do something for our transgendered friends. What are you, you playing? The, 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 the theme is uh, June is a drag. And uh, we did, a, did some polling on Facebook, and it looks like uh, our choices for movies this month are The Birdcage. Oh, oh yes. Okay. And Tuang Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmarsh. Yeah. Awesome. And, and they're free, right? People the, can just come on down and, and they're free. And yes. The, the, the food and drink are not free, the, well, yeah. but, but the food is. So, What's your favorite, or, uh, what's or, your favorite food? At, do you have any favorite foods at Bruvies or just kind of whatever you can get your hands on? I, you know, it's, a lot of people do not know this, but they have their own unique sort of almost mole sauce for their enchiladas. Really? I think that's the best thing that Bruvies has is that and 
if you like more Chicago style pizza or oh. thicker crust pizza than the New York style, they actually have a decent pizza oven. Really? At Ruby's, yes. And what time does the movie start? Five o'clock? Is five, yeah. Five o'clock? F- five to ten usually is the showtime. And uh, I guess if people want to find out about more of those movies coming, follow follow Geek Show on, on Facebook. On, uh, on, on the Facebook, we will we'll put event listings up there. We uh, advertise the movie night as much as we can on the podcast on and on Twitter, too. Yeah, yeah. And you you do your own Twitter as well, right? I do, at Jeff Michael Weiss. Yeah, so definitely. We'll run down the list. Anything else you want to add before we wrap it up here or anything else that we didn't touch on or anything else coming up that you want to... You want to talk about or, or, uh, you know, I, I've been sort of helping out the Salt Lake Comic Con with, uh, suggestions oh, for, for guests yeah, and that. that's coming up in September. Yes. So I hope people are getting excited about that and they should go to the website. I heard Shatner's coming. Shatner's coming. Yeah. Salt Lake Comic Con.com. That, that is, that is, that's big. Uh huh. I, and it, it's nice for me because that's always been sort of a sore thumb uh-huh. that, We've tried to get conventions going, and and there's don't don't get me wrong, there are some like Anime Bonsai, uh-huh. which also happens in the fall, which is which is great. Mm. It's great. It's it's an anime based one, but we have needed something bigger okay. than that. I I feel. Do you think the turnout for for Salt Lake Comic Con is going to be decent? I do. It seems like the excitement's there. I do, and uh, at at this point, I believe Geek Show Podcast we're going to be doing something live there. Really? Yes. I'll at definitely. least that's the yeah, that's the the word or the hope or fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I mean, it would make sense to for you guys to do something for it. So, SaltLakeComicCon dot com. Mm-hmm. Anything else? I mean, what other big names do you know that you? Well, I know they're chasing some, but but so far the people uh, are. But Shatner is one hundred percent confirmed, or yeah, that's I mean, what the, as much as as much as he can yeah, be, yeah, as much as yeah. he can be. I, I made some other suggestions. I, the one I'm hoping they'll follow through on and they'll get is Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Okay, he, that, that would be yeah. because he brings crowds, and I've seen Bruce work and, crowds before, and he's amazing. And where is that going to be at again? Where, uh, out at the it's uh, like down in Sandy, isn't yes, it? Yes, going to be down there at the Expo Center. At the Expo Center. Yes. Okay. It, it's it's sort of taken over what used to be called Geeks, G-E-E-X, uh-huh. which was mostly video games based. But a new group has sort of taken that over. So I think it's still going to have the video game component, but but as well as film, television, and comic books. And, and music, hopefully, too. And this is the, the first year of Salt Lake Comic Con, too. So yes. So, so kind of see where... if. They can make it a second year. Absolutely. <laughs> You're like, it's better than, you know, having to leave town to go, you know? It's- Absolutely. Anybody who's been to San Diego Comic-Con knows how much fun it is, but what a nightmare it is, too. Yeah. So well, if, it's, it's if, great for the city as far as, out, you know, out-of-towners coming in, great for the local economy. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I'm sure that the uh, Utah Film Commission would be very happy to see celebrities and yeah. have them think, hey, maybe we should do something here. Well, maybe you should get some of them on Geek Show. Get Chatner as a guest, right? <sighs> Fingers crossed. Could you imagine? Uh, well, we tried to last. Come we, down to the basement and talk with us. We, we, we tried to last time. We uh, yeah. when we podcasted before the Chatner show in January yeah. at Kingsbury Hall, but his availability is not always so. Yeah. But Bruce Campbell, I'll bet we could get. Yeah. Yes. That would be a lot of fun. That Interviewed be- him before. He's great. For for Geek Show, you interviewed them, or for uh, actually for the actually I've interviewed both of them now that I think about it. Yeah, both get, both Shatner and and Campbell for for the papers for, for, the, for the papers. Yeah. yeah, do you ever get starstruck? Do you ever get nervous around big celebrities? You know, the one time I got nervous, as weird as it sounds, was meeting Stanley at San Diego Comic Con. I could imagine uh, Jason Aaron, who's a comics writer who mostly works for Marvel these days. I met when he came to Black Cat Comics and done a signing uh-huh. and sort of befriended. Uh, I saw him at Comic-Con, came up and talked to him when his signing wasn't going so well, and we continued talking and ran into Stanley, and Jason Aaron introduced me to Stanley, and I just kind of... Do you at least get your picture with him? Right? No, I didn't. You didn't get your picture with him? Come on. No, I... I, I, it, it would have been bad. It would have been bad. Yeah. yeah well, a bad picture or just a bad situation? A bad picture and a bad, <laughs> situ- <laughs> bad situation. I probably would have turned into a puddle of goo. Yeah. And especially he, as he shakes my hand and says, face front, true believers. 
<laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Anything else, Jeff? I appreciate you coming on. How can people find you? Uh, uh, look for me on Twitter at on, Jeff Michael Weiss. Uh-huh. That's actually the best way to, to find me or through my various pages on Facebook, Big Movie Mouth Off and Geek Show Podcast. Mm-hmm. And also, please to look up my articles on MSN Entertainment, including Parallel Universe and MSN Movies. And I'll try to get all the links. I try to get all the links with the show notes at the, uh, the website so that way people can uh, te- you know, find you and add you and follow you and hear what you have to say. And Yeah, I, I've added a whole bunch more followers on Twitter. I don't know where they came from. Do you like Twitter or Facebook better? I like Twitter better. Yeah. I, I, I've always been one of those guys who likes something short, snappy, and, yeah. and clever. I'm I'm a fan. I love Twitter a lot better. Plus, it's a lot less intimidating to follow somebody on Twitter versus a- ab- absolutely. And, and and my Facebook, my personal Facebook, I figure is my page for myself and my friends. Yeah. And, but Twitter is something that everybody can enjoy. And most of my Twitter updates actually up uh, update my Facebook page too. So. Well, there you go. You're living in, you know, 2013. Technology. You know, technology is pretty awesome. All right. Well, you know, down the road, I, I, I still think it'd be fun to get you and Jimmy in here together, <laughs> and you guys have your, fight, you, fight, you, you know, fight, a little, fight, little fight. movie, a little movie fight. So a little bicker off, a little bicker off. The uh, I am Salt Lake big movie bicker off. Right. <laughs> I look forward to it. Many, many thanks goes out to Jeff Michael Weiss for coming on the show and sharing his story with the rest of you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I had a really great time sitting down and chatting with him and getting to know him just a little bit better. I have all the notes at IamSaltLake.com slash episode 77, along with links so you can follow him on Twitter and check out the uh, Geek Show podcast, as well as Big Movie Mouth Off. Check them out. If you have not listened to the Geek Show podcast, I highly recommend you add that to your uh, podcast playlist. Really great show here from Salt Lake City, Utah. Really great group, group of guys. And I cannot recommend you enough to check that out and support them and uh, take a listen if you haven't. Uh, really, really good time. Uh, again, I am saltlake.com is the website. Got all the previous episodes right there so you can uh, download them at your convenience. Get to know people in Salt Lake and hopefully uh, get to know somebody new that you you were not aware of or an event coming up. That's what I'm trying to do with this show, guys. And uh, everybody that has supported it, thank you so much. I am Salt Lake. Uh, that, that way you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash I am Salt Lake. Facebook.com slash I am Salt Lake. That way you can get in touch with me and uh, stay in touch in between episodes as I share everything going on here in Salt Lake City. Hey, a few ways you can help out the show and all help is appreciated. Uh, first of all, you can leave us a review on iTunes. That is very, very much appreciated. Helps boost our ratings, get us in front of more people. Also, uh, you can give us a thumbs up if you listen on Stitcher. Share us uh, with your family and friends on your favorite social media sites as well as check us out on the Mediocre Radio Network. Uh, give us a call, three or give me a call, 385-202-5926. Leave me a voicemail. Tell me what you think of the show. Tell me what you think of the podcast. Tell me what you think of Salt Lake City. Or if you just want to say hello, I'd love to hear from you guys. I am saltlake at gmail.com if you want to get in touch or be uh, a guest on a future episode. I would love to bring you on and share your story with the rest of the city, with the rest of my listeners think that's going to about do it. I uh, will be back on Sunday with another episode showcasing somebody new, somebody who's doing something really cool here in the Salt Lake City area. 